So preliminary matters, um, apologies received from Council Sharon Sullivan uh, and uh, the Deputy Chief uh, Officer um, Carrigan. Um, Carrigan. Are there any other uh, apologies? We're up to quorum, I think there's no problem there. Um, minutes of the previous meeting uh, are here. Are there any uh, issues uh, arising from those minutes? No, would it be agreed that I will in due course sign those? Thank you. I'll sign them in due course. Uh, so we move on to the meat of the agenda and that's uh, item three. Oh yeah, oh, sorry, De are there any declarations of interest? Anyone would like to declare an interest in the item on the agenda? Okay, so um, we've dealt with minutes. Um, there is a deputation of item three. Um, just to advise you members, uh, your constitution, <coughs> standing order 11 at 11.5, deals with um, the issue of deputations. Um, and to advise you um, that once the chair of this meeting calls upon the deputation, that deputation may have up to five minutes, but nothing more than that, to speak to the issues of that deputation. Um, and must be related to that matter. Um, following that five minutes, members of the authority may um, ask questions for a further five minutes. However, I should advise you members that your constitution says that, that any questions um, must be made without discussion and without debate. Thank you, Chair. Uh, right. Can you, can you hear me all right? Is this working yet? Uh, as you know, because it says on the agenda the deputation in relation to the uh, Merseyside Fire and Rescue Authority audit, uh, each year there's a period of, it was last year 30 days and previous years it's been 20 days, when citizens can inspect invoices and contracts. And I came here last year and looked at various invoices and contracts and unfortunately due to other things happening at the same time, I, although I took photos of some of them, I had to ask for copies of the others. Unfortunately, uh, the copies I was given, uh, I get paid for copies, but the copies I was given, a lot of the things that were blacked out on the copy, sorry, a lot of the things that were blacked out for the inspection were visible on the copies, such as names of former employees involved in uh, employment law disputes or criminal prosecutions. And for the purposes of data protection, I thought it best to flag this up. I have mentioned it in previous years uh, when the inspection copies have been readable with the names. Uh, but of course, we're taking photos. That doesn't make much of a difference because the photos just show the black bits out. But as I say, uh, some of the names of uh, people involved in litigation with the Fire Authority, and uh, which I presume you didn't want me to have on the copies, is clearly visible. <coughs> and that was what I wanted to flag up because obviously I thought it was best to bring this to your attention so in future years it wouldn't be as much of an issue. I think that's it. So much shorter than five minutes. But if you've got any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Are there any questions, members? No? Thank you. Item four, service delivery plan. Chief? Thanks, Chair. The purpose of this report is to request that members consider and approve the service delivery plan which is attached at appendix one to uh, your report. The methodology that explains the function of the service delivery plan and how it's developed is set out in paragraphs three to six, which is on pages 12 to 13. And paragraph seven on page 13 provides an explanation of how station targets are set in terms of outputs. So to give you an example, Liverpool City Fire Station has a, a much higher number of site-specific risk information visits to be undertaken because of the, uh, the nature of the station ground and the number of, uh, number of commercial properties on the station ground. Whereas if you take Heswell for example, that has far less commercial properties but has got far more residential properties. So the targets in Haswell that 
reflect that so they would have a higher number of HLSCs that they would need to undertake relative to SSRI. Paragraph 8 explains the methodology that applies in setting our outcome performance indicators such as the number of accidental dwelling fires. What officers do is use a trend analysis to predict future performance from historical data that covers the previous five years, which allows us then to set targets <coughs> which are statistically <coughs> robust. So in essence, you extrapolate from that five years worth of data what is the likely uh, outcome going to be in the, in the following year that you can set a target based around that, which, which has a degree of uh, a degree of mathematical and science applied to it. Each functional area within the service has its own functional plan. And as the members will recall, we moved to a functional structure back in 2015, which centralised delivery and removed our district-based management teams, and that allowed us to reduce the overall number of senior officers in the service. Now the functional plans align with our station plans and what that ensures is that our strategic priorities are delivered at the local level specific to the local circumstances. As I've explained previously when I use the comparison between Liverpool City and the targets that we set there relative to say the targets we would set for Hesmer. And each station plan is attached as an individual appendix to this report. I am conscious members that this is a very weighty report indeed when you uh, when you add the appendices there but for your own specific areas you'll be able to look at those station plans and you'll be able to view the content so i'm not going to speak to them all in detail because the uh, they do differ from station to station as you uh, as you'd expect so I'll, I'll pause at that point chair uh, and take any questions members might have. thank you the flow plan is on page 29 um, complicated <laughs> though that is. Um, Council yeah, it, It's just a, a, a quickie point really. Um, just looking on the number of businesses on page 23, is it just coincidence that Liverpool have exactly the same number as well? Yes, on this page. Uh, let me check that. That's, uh, that, that doesn't, given, given that Liverpool's population is, uh, is probably about, well, about a quarter bigger, isn't it? So it, it would be, un it seems very unlikely. Let me check that, Leslie. I'm not sure that, that is right. And the, as I say, this. Uh, Parallels the IRMP. We normally deal with the IRMP. This is the consequence of the IRMP, and it's about the delivery of the service front end. Um, probably much, as the chief has said, to take away and look at your own proposals in your own fire station area. Uh, any questions or points, or can this um, report be uh, accepted and agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Um, so we move on to. Five, Code of Corporate Governance, starting on page 215. Chief. Thanks, Chair. The purpose of this report is to request that members approve the revised Code of Corporate Governance, which is attached <coughs> as Appendix A, and also Service Instruction 0875, Assurance and Transparency Arrangements, which is attached as Appendix B. Paragraph 3 of the report sets out a definition of corporate governance which is drawn from the 2007 SIP for SOLAS framework and which is the system by which local government directs and controls their functions and relates to their communities. Paragraph 4 sets out three key principles which underpin the authority code of corporate governance which are openness and inclusivity, accountability and integrity. Paragraph 5 sets out the six detailed principles of good governance, which I won't read out, but are there for you to note. The 2007 SIP for SOLAS framework has now been updated, and it's been expanded from the six principles that are detailed uh, under paragraph 5 to the seven principles, 
which are set out in the bullet point list of paragraph 8. Again, I won't read them out, but they are there for you to, uh, to note. And as you'd expect, members, the revised Code of Corporate Governance for the authority now reflects the seven principles rather than the six that uh, were there previously. Paragraph 10 highlights that uh, transparency and accountability are key elements of the requirements in relation to corporate governance and therefore the service instruction which is attached to Appendix B and to which I referred to earlier, that sets out the means by which the authority will meet its obligations in this regard. Uh, I'll pause at that point here and take any questions or members. I like the, uh, on page 219, the planning wheel or delivery wheel or whatever it is. The government are planning to bring back the inspectorate, uh, which will be basically somebody will, will bid to run the fire inspectorate. And we will eventually be inspected. And it's important that we have all of our core documentation in place. <coughs> and this is, is, for us, very core documentation. Uh, and there's, 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 another, there's, there's other suites of documents that we'll need as well. This is very much, from our point of view, a very important document. Any questions, particularly for officers on this? If not, uh, yes. What would be the time frame for the inspectors being set up, and potentially for there being an inspection? Uh, the, uh, the inspector will take effect as of. So, easiest way to explain this is currently we are. Chief Fire and Rescue Advisor position, which is uh, Peter Holland. That role ceases as of the 1st of April. So the inspectorate takes effect as of the 1st of April, which is only two weeks hence far. The Fire Minister, at his recent speech, set out the intention for thematic inspections to be undertaken in the autumn of this year. So. Our anticipation is that there will be inspections around September, October time. And I, my view is that it's, uh, there is a good chance, given the fact that we are the, the lead of party for national resilience, it may be that the inspector that wish to come and uh, take a specific look at that. Because in addition to the thematic areas that the Fire Minister highlighted, there is also a view that uh, the, the, the beat around that reassurance for National Resilience. So my guess is we will get uh, an inspection, even if it isn't one of the thematic inspections around autumn time. There is some discussion. Uh, if we want to, we can stay within the LGA peer-led. Um, it's not an inspection framework, but it is a, an audit operation for audit. And, and you know that's a decision that we as members will have to make. I think this is a free service, uh, and uh, I think there's a some assumption that some of those peer-led reviews will continue and carry on. Uh, but but it, it, it's for us to decide how we want to slot into that. But um, I think that once they're up and running, they're planning to do a three-year cycle of inspections, so they'll inspect a third of authorities um, each year, or maybe more, but initially what they will want to do is to determine, because these people are coming from outside the service, they may well bring staff in that they employ who are from within the service currently, but they will have to establish their key lines of inquiry, they will have to establish their um, specification for what represents a good fire authority. And so I've no doubt that they will come here first to benchmark, to benchmark uh, what is good practice and yeah. good delivery. And they will take that away and then use that to populate their plan. The minister was going to make this announcement two, three weeks ago, uh, but for certain reasons decided that he wouldn't make the announcement. But obviously there may be a void from the first of, well there won't be a void because there's no inspectorate. There never was, well, there, was, there hasn't been an inspector for seven years, whatever it is, ten years. So there's no void, but the LGA, the Fire Services Management Committee, and, and, and all of us at the fire, have wanted 
some form of independent benchmarking of what is done because that's, for, that's a protection for us all. Any more queries or questions on this? If not, uh, approve the revised code of conduct as a, uh, at Appendix A. Thank you very much. I think that's all the business on the agenda. So I'm grateful for those who are here and those who stay. Thank you. Thank you.